Okay, let's talk to the Hardys about what we found. It's you again. What is it? Okay, I talked to Klaasje. Now I really need to talk to Ruby. Why? He leans back and regards you with curiosity. I'm going to level with you. She's the next link in the chain that leads me to Lully's killer. Sounds like you're making her a suspect in this. Not on my watch, you're not. Ruby's one of us. We're not gonna throw her under your moral intern steamroller. Fuck that shit. And fuck you too, moral fa- He throws a glance at Titus as the last syllable leaves his lips. The big guy sighs. Ruby is missing. If you hide from the police in a murder investigation, you become a suspect. You know how it works, guys. That's nothing. That's just legalese. You don't even have a sound theory. I don't want to be rude, but we're trying to get some R&R &R here. Think you could fuck off now? I think we'll keep sticking around, Titus. You'll be surprised at how quickly a theory presents itself if you keep looking. Logic impossible. Present a solid theory about why Ruby could have done it. Situational modifiers, found the key in the Union box, saw the winch outside, reconstructed the murder scene, found an antique rifle, Clausia gave motive, secret route found, and Ruby is a drug trader established. A sudden flash of lightning in your neocortex. The hostile cafeteria is lit by its airy blaze. Floor plans, bullet trajectories, webs of human emotion, all channeled into a single thought. Why are you so sure Ruby didn't off him? Because she was here, all night, with us. He's cobbling together shit so he can put her away. It's COP 101. She was here all night, 11.30 to 12.15. She was here during all that time? Yeah, with us, drinking, near the stage there. He points at the karaoke stage. She didn't go to the toilet. No. In the whole 45 minute window, she was with you all the time. All right. She took a fucking leak, okay? For one moment. Maybe went out too. She has an operation to run from her lorry. We're not getting into what that operation is again, Kalp. And just because she was gone for five minutes doesn't mean she magically got to the roof and shot him. I've been through this. It's not plausible. All right, we're in. We got Ruby unaccounted for sometime during the window. This was crucial. Now let's place her on that roof. You do agree that the shot came from the roof, right? Why not? You can't draw a straight line into Clausius' window from any of the surrounding buildings. Not from what I know about Martin A's. Maybe from the coast. But like I said, I've been too busy dealing with you idiots. So no, I don't think it was a sniper. It was close up. There's a 72% chance that the bullet came from the roof. 72%? There's a percentage and all. Where'd you get it from? Your guys in the lab? I analyzed it on the spot. Turns out I can do that. No, you can't. I know what you did here on the weekend. People dog. And what they say doesn't sound like a science cop. You're a madman. Those numbers were an ass pull, man. Yeah. And they don't put her on the roof either. It's just Mambo Jambo. He hasn't got shit. There's a secret route in the kitchen that leads straight up to the roof. Oh. He looks sincerely curious. Through what looks like an abandoned pinball workshop. Hmm. People say there was a pinball arcade here, sometime before the hostel. What was it called, Theo? East Delta Pinball Arcade. <laughs> Weird place. Went bankrupt. Okay, but how'd you get up? There's no room for a staircase in this building. Or an elevator, for that matter. The elevator is outside the building. It's an old dumbwaiter, used for moving pinball machines up and down from the workshop. 
From there, a door leads straight to the roof. You can just step outside. Ruby could have gone up, shot him, come down. All under seven minutes. That's quite the theory. We need to have a look at that secret passage, boys. I'm on it, boss. Right when the law clears, me and Angus are going up there. It's a dumb way to, not an industrial lift. How about I go instead of... Just now. You got something else to back this route up? Or is that it? Have we firmly established Ruby could have had access to the roof where the man was shot? Firmly? Firmly doesn't go well with could have. There's a route to the roof. Me and the boys need to check it out. That's what we established. But a route does not put that bullet in his head. A gun does that, and Ruby doesn't carry one. Phase two, murder weapon. Get a gun in her hand. If not that, then at least a shadow of a doubt in the shape of a gun. Just don't contradict yourself. If it doesn't sound like Ruby did it, maybe keep it to yourself. I've analyzed the bullet that killed him. It was jacketed. So... The man shrugs and looks at you. So it had to come from a breech-loading rifle. Military grade. Not even you militia monkeys have those. This goes against your short-range theory. If the murder weapon was military grade, how did Ruby get it? Just because it's rare doesn't mean you can't get it. Calm. That's exactly what it means. That wasn't strong. Show them the antique rifle. There are weapons like this just lying around in Martinez. That looks antique. A bell grave. It's inoperable. Where'd you get it? There's a cellar in the bookshop. It was hidden there with others just like it. Twenty, maybe thirty rifles, Titus. Also broken, but still, there were too many. And there must be other caches too. God damn it! We need to close that dump down for good. That's a goddamn breech loader, too. Find one that works, and you got a military grade weapon that shoots jacketed ammunition. He shakes his head. He sees it. This is coming together. He must. Time to really close the deal. Show them the bullet. This is the bullet that did it. 446 millimeter. The Belma Grave uses the same caliber. The blonde man looks at the mushroomed Deathbringer in the evidence bag and says, Yeah, the bitch is jacketed all right. Four millimeter too. Whoa. Well, goddamn. It's not proof, but it's a possible murder weapon. Close to her. Too damn close. You have been thorough. I'll give you that. I didn't say I'd prove she had the murder weapon. Just that we need to find her. All right. Keep talking. I'm getting a bit curious about some things myself. T, we're not seriously considering it, are we? Ruby wouldn't do this. Why would she do something like this? Phase three, motive, the last component. Klausia told me some pretty interesting things about Ruby. Yeah, like what? Apparently she had a thing for Klausia. A thing? You mean? He tilts his head to the side and falls silent. Behind its squinting eyes, dominoes are falling. Fast. It's all beginning to make sense to him now. Yeah, but they're both girls. Girls like girls too, Angus, sometimes. This is one of those times. She liked Glacier. Come on, guys. She hangs out with you meatheads. This cannot come as a surprise. Yeah? No. Ruby's got more balls than a ball pit. You'd have to be an idiot not to... Guys, I'm not the only one who knew. Right? Knew what? First he says she's murdered him. Now she's a f who? It's a lie. Come on, Glenn. She likes Monica's titties more than you do. Everyone knows which way the wind blows there. I did. I knew it. That's why she didn't fuck me at Fatty's birthday party. She didn't fuck you, because you're 40, and you still live with your mom, Dennis. 
Light laughter sounds off in the room. It feels nervous. Clausier said she made advances on her, and she thwarted them. Ruby then threatened her and told her to end her relationship with the deceased. This is some sordid shit. It's also the kind of garbage our Miss Aronier puts out to cover her own ass. She did tell us when we were close to arresting her. Figures. But that Ruby is queer as cabaret. Now that I start thinking about it. So there is some truth to it. And that's okay. Some are queerer than others. You can still be a hardy. But... If you bring your own personal shit into our outfit. If that's the case, then it's not right. But it's not the case, right? There are many pieces that fit together that way, Eugene. Face it. When Clausia came downstairs, Ruby appeared to know that something was wrong. Nah, man. That's just Ruby. She's got shit under control. That's her whole thing. That's why she's so good. Plus, man, it's like female intuition. You know, women talk to women. Which is sort of why we need someone on the team who they talk to. Eugene wants a woman on the team so they can do their job. That must be hard. Half of Martinez is female. Or she knew what happened because she killed him. Not so useful. Titus looks at Elaine, then Eugene. Fucking hell. The blonde man is in some kind of anguish that makes him stare into his garlic bread bowl intently. Also, it's not why did she kill him, it's why did she organize the cover-up. And I suppose you have a theory about that too, cop. She could have just been covering up for herself, Titus. Think about it. Why go through all that effort? It was her idea, wasn't it? The hanging. You went along, but she suggested it. She had, like, a fully formed plan and shit. Right when she came back downstairs. The little man squints, eyes beady. Really, Shanks? Closier wanted to talk to another girl, that's all. She was just the first one up there. I could have come up with that plan if I'd have been first. Time for a logic demonstration. Eugene. Let's assume you killed him. He scoffs. Think. You kill him. Get up there. Shoot him. Get down. Would you prefer to go on trial with your friends, as part of a lynch mob, or alone for committing a murder? The man is silent. If she used us to cover her own shit up, well, that's a serious violation of the Hardy Code, boss. Which is why she didn't. This is fucking stupid, Titus. This and the queer thing, all of it. Why aren't more of you defending her? This is fucking stupid, Titus. Glenn, I thought the same thing when she skipped town and left us in this shit. Oh, so he didn't rule her out completely. And she skipped town. This is good. Titus, you have to see it. Things don't add up. We need to talk to her. Silence. He looks around the room. The old man in the corner nods. A very small nod, and a trickle of tobacco spit on his lip. Yeah, I see it. There's one more thing I've been wondering about, ever since you asked me where she is. Add it to your list of suspicions, if you won't. I don't know. I don't know where she went. She just got up and left. Got real scared, too. Wouldn't tell me where. However hard I asked. Want to know why? Why? She was afraid I would tell you. Maybe she was right. By now, I probably would. He looks you straight in the eye. She knew there's evidence on her, and she knew we'd find it. This is typical suspect behavior. Why fleeing is always incriminatory. Perhaps. Ask her if you find her. It won't be easy, though. She made sure of that. When did she leave? Friday afternoon, when you first arrived. I got word the RCM was in town. Then she came in to see me. Told me she was leaving. That's when we had our little conversation. What was she scared of? I told you. You. 
Me, as in the RCM. No, you, as in the cop with the sideburns and the disco clothes. And they hold in his heart that first. And the hole in his heart. Why no? You suck on that gun like someone tore you a brand new asshole. Don't forget the funny tie, too. How can I forget? He nods at your tie. You and I are going to dance in the moonlight under a billion stars. You know, when I first saw you limping here, I thought she was paranoid or sniffing her own supply. But now I'm not so sure. What else did Ruby tell you about me? She said you have a funny taste in clothes and that you won't stop. Won't stop. Until you have something on her. She said she's heard of you from Jamrock, that you're a human can opener, that you play suspects against each other. Open them up like cans. Fucking hell. Titus, did he just? The tattooed man shakes his head. Open Angus up like a can? Yes, he did. Now we can whine about it, whack him, or we can go on with our lives. I'm having a go on with our lives kind of day, Al. How about you? Silence. He nods. Is that true, Kim? Am I a can opener? You are insistent. He nods. Anything else? Anything? Yeah. There was something else. She wouldn't tell me, though. I could see she wanted to. It was burning on her lips. This cop, Titus. This cop, he... But she was too scared. Do you have any clues on where Ruby went? She's not far. We know that much. She didn't take her lorry, so she's on foot. Good fucking luck, man. She knows this place like the back of her hand. You'll never find her. Yeah, Al. And we won't either. He gives a sharp look. She's not really a hardy candidate anymore, is she? She's not, Glenn. Have you looked for her? A little. On the coast. Where have you looked for her, more precisely? More precisely? On the coast, past the water log. She's not here, so I'm thinking she's there. Can you tell me where on the coast I should start looking? Sure. There's some shit houses there. A center block town. The fisher folk there refuse to unionize. So that's one place we haven't looked. I hear they have a shack where junkies sometimes crash. Time for you to step up. We will start there. One more question. What does Ruby look like? Boyish. Hair's red. Dyed. She looks like a Lowry man. Do you know what she's doing with Ulan frequencies? The what now? I have no idea. Boys? She said she's building a... A pale emitter. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Yulon frequencies at a pale something. I don't know more. This guy barely understands what he's talking about. There you have it. Pale something. Titus puts an end to it. It feels like you'll get to know. Soon enough. It's not much, but it'll do. It'll have to. He puts his hand out. Shake it. His grip is firm and reassuring, like holding a piece of unpolished granite. Not just granite, tightly packed RCM sergeant material. You should be a cop, Titus. When are you gonna get it through your dumb head? I already am. I just wasn't sure you were. And he still isn't. People aren't afraid of good cops in the way Ruby was afraid of you, he thinks, then turns back to his men. Very cool. I think there was a map for sale at the bookstore. Let's see if we can pick that up real quick. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours? Yeah, and? Notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Classia. 
It was nice and ruby-centric in the end. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about this mishmash? So far, no one has mentioned hearing the shot. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. Well, the bullet didn't have to come from the roof. It could have come from anywhere on the coast. Absolutely. It could have come from anywhere. But you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. The bullet was also jacketed. These don't just lie around everywhere, do they? Good point. It is rather rare these days. But do continue. Also turned out the bullet was an antique. True. Strange how you conducted the whole advanced ballistics analysis and then hand-waved it. The footprints in the pinball workshop didn't quite fit with the odd souls prints on the crime scene. No, they didn't. I'm done thinking about this. That's right. Finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now. You know that. Free as a bird on that roof. Lighting up a cigarette and thinking, am I glad Ruby's in this shit and not me? Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. And yet, I now feel the need to harass her further. Thank you, Volition. Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Why do I feel like you've won here? I really don't know, sir. I certainly don't feel like I've won. I feel like shit, sir. All the time. She smiles. A bitter little smile. She means it. But this turned out well for you. You've slipped past all suspicion. Clearly, I haven't. We're having this conversation, aren't we? How well could it have gone, I mean? She looks around. I'm stuck in Martinez just like all of us. I've been up here for... I don't know how long now. I like to call this my rooftop containment facility. What are you contained for, then? For my sins, of course. The long-standing sins of a bad, frivolous person. For destroying my first love. For working for bad people. The list goes on and on. Something seems off with this theory I've developed. About Ruby. I don't know what to say. It all seems fortuitous. For you. None of this is fortuitous for me. That's it then, I guess. She nods. Slowly. Carefully, even. There is suddenly a strange glint in her eyes. Not malicious, but dangerous. Let's get back to those lies you told. Lies? I... Yes, we demand she be punished for deceiving us. We demand her anxiety. We demand her fear. Let's talk about you and Ruby again. She nods, then nervously pulls on her cigarette. Okay. Actually, let's back out of that. Kim, why haven't we arrested her yet? There may be grounds here. A, A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. I kind of want to arrest her, so I'm going to hunt around for that dialogue option here. Okay. Eh, we can ask her, did you kill Lily? What? Why would I put myself through this? 
insanity. Get myself cornered like this. There's a silence. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around. Close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Now, you guys suddenly have theories pouring out. When they're obviously just stabs in the dark. He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? No. I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. The bullet in his head, it was jacketed. Military grade. Who else has a military rifle? I don't know. His friends have rifles. Maybe those psychos did it. Coalition military have rifles. I'm not a munitions expert, and I did not shoot him. She might have been a tad disingenuous when she avoided talking about the bullet in his head before. Look who's waking up from a thousand years of sleep. You've lied to me about this bullet before, when I said he was shot. You said you're confused. I've said I'm sorry. What more do you want me to say? I did my best not to lie. It didn't always work. Downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm sad to hear that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one has implicated me. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape. I told you before. That wasn't what happened. True, sire. Tis true. Like what? She nods silently, then picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Okay. She nods. Yeah? All right. Sure. The record. Yeah? All right. I really- She smiles. How well I'm stuck in my- She nods. There is suddenly a strange glint. Lies. I- Yes. We demand she be- She nods. The nervous- You said she could have come- Then slip- Interesting thing. Yes. She's been up here many times. She used the peephole. You mean to- No. She's not- Don't let your imagination run wild here, sire. Keep it on track. Okay. She slowly, slowly lights an- Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I have the opportunity to arrest her here. So, we'll just have to go and do something else. What about these two here? The woman in an RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? Yes, I am. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Is everything all right? Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? She's still avoiding your gaze. I'm a deeply flawed individual, but I bring joy to the world. Do you now? She asks, narrowing her eyes. After a moment, she shakes her head. Something changes in her. It's pity. Pity comes over her. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? So what precinct are you from? What precinct? 
She just sighs. Am I from? God, he doesn't know. Fucking deranged lunatic. The sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Okay, goodbye. You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. You can't leave it like that. Spin it on its head. Engage Cap's lock. I look like a burning sun. What? Push it more. Harder. Be more intelligent. I mean the likeness of the holy sun in the sky. I look like it. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It's not just this week. What do you want? He scans you from head to toe. There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar but different face. He might be wearing a disguise. Cool shades. Are you wearing a disguise? Yes, it's a hobby of mine. He looks at you inquisitively. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. Something to click. It's not happening, though. Who is this guy? Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks, glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. Esprit de corps. Formidable. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? 41st? Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look and adds, Somewhere good. Let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Okay. Oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy. You're not busy. Let's just play around. So what would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? You seem like a cool guy. I'd love to have you as my partner. Would you now, or would I be cramping your style? Never mind. Partner. The man bites his lip and waves his hand. No, you wouldn't cramp my style at all. Okay. How about you stop wasting my time and get on with whatever you were doing then? Do you have a crime to solve? Oh no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head and looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Who else is in our imaginary police station? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers! Yes, sir. Solving crimes, locking up bad guys, and... And get this, and not getting that drink on at 2 o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who's the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I said, just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by the sunglassed man. Okay, yes, you get the joke. Leave it at that. I can't imagine it anymore. <sighs> Neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His gray eyes suddenly flash above the glass frames. They feel sad. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Got some questions for you. I'm a cop. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like Guillaume Le... No! 
You will not start blabbering about that asshole. Now, will you answer some other questions for me? No. He says calmly, then just keeps staring at you. Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. If I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you want to hear me say things. Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Okay. This person who was shot... Hmm... Which one do I go with? The person who we think shot him. We made it look like he was hanged, that we're looking for her. We, we can't find her. Well, where have you looked for her? We think she may be on the coast. West of here? Tough luck. The place is ruined from the bombardment. A lot of places to hide there. Well, yeah. Hey, why am I telling you these things? I don't know. Why are you? He gives you an odd look. Who knows why we do the things we do? Somehow, bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming. Like you've done it before. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the whole thing over again. We're not wasting time. Okay. There is no time. The person who was shot and hanged, he may have been shot by the person who made it look like he was hanged. A cover-up? Well, the author of the cover-up is the perp? Makes sense. I know, right? But what's the motive? You don't have a motive? Then the double cover-up seems too neat. Yeah. Uh, hey, why am I telling you these things? I don't know. Why are you? Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Okay then, see you around. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Wait, your voice. I recognize it. Oh really? I wonder where? I lost my badge recently. When I called in to report it missing, you were there. That's the where you remember me from? <laughs> I have a bit of... memory trouble. You don't say. Goodbye then. The voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Okay. The man with the sunglasses and his... Hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes, just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Again? I can't believe this shit. Look, I just have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Okay. Okay? Jean, he said okay. Give it Okay. I was clearly wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, now let's see if we can get a map. And then we'll open the, or we'll close the lock to the channel and we'll leave off there. Several maps. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Storekeep, can I buy one of these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90s. That old thing from when some dis- The place does not- They didn't get that far. 
The north coast to the east, Hurom. It's it's so small. No, this is somewhere to be. This large map. Okay, I've done this before. It's into in the northeast. The ocean brick connection. Eight hundred and fifty. Do I have the map in my inventory somewhere? There we go. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of my oh, I've finger done this. Finally. Huh. Okay, there we go. Now we actually have a map. Wow. Control panel with loose wires dangling out from the hole where an indicator light used to be, and a mechanical lever sitting in the middle. Pull the lever again. You grab the handle and pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a loud clunk. Then the water lock starts moving. We can go to the coast now. Expect rugged terrain and drugs. Perfect. Across the coast. This is where we will leave off. 